if we look at a group G with binary operation star, and a Bean group is one where uh, the maximum structure is given to a set with a single binary operation. Uh, he is uh, <coughs> associative. There exists an identity. Inverses exist with respect to that identity. And if it's abelian, it's community. Okay. Do we have any examples of groups that we've seen so far which are not commutative? Can you think of any examples that we've given where either the, the operation A star B is not equal to B star A for some choice of A and B? The answer is no. We've never seen an example up to this point of a group where the operation doesn't commute. Where it's, that is, A star B equals B star A for all A and B in the group. An example which we're not going to go into detail at in this particular time, but you may be familiar with it. Um, are you familiar with N by N matrices? Matrices say with entries from the real number with n rows and n columns. Familiar object? Mm -hmm. Whether it's familiar to you this morning or not, uh, it will be familiar to you before we finish this three week period because linear algebra is one of the topics which is covered on, on this particular exam. So we do go over this in more detail. But for example, if A is a matrix, and I can write an example of a two by two matrix. Here would be an example of a two by two matrix. I could call this matrix A and come up with a second example of, say, a two by two matrix. Here, all the entries are integers. Um, <clears throat> this is two by two, and there's two rows and two columns. We could, that is two rows and two columns, and if they have the same size, the same number of rows and columns, it does make sense to multiply them together. Plus four, which is seven. That is the matrix, which is the product of A times B. If I reverse the order, Right? and write B times A. That works with this matrix on the left and this matrix on the right, if I switch those two. Therefore, I take the row from this matrix and the column from this one when I multiply them together. That is rarely the same thing if you reverse the order of these two matrices. Right? Hence, it is almost never the case that A times B equals B times A. This is an example of a binary operation on the set of two by two matrices and multiplication does not commute. As a reminder, what is a ring? <coughs> is a okay. So R plus. Let me emphasize um, that it is. It is one of the things we could do in, in describing a ring is we could say R star, star prime, indicate that there are two binary operations, and we don't know exactly what those binary operations are. They may be defined to be something quite different from ordinary addition and ordinary multiplication. But rings are always written this way, right? And the two operations are written as plus and times, even if they're not plus or times in the usual sense. It's 
simply means there are two distinct binary operations. How do you distinguish between the two? Well, whatever one of these is plus forms an abelian group. Which means, under addition, or the operation that's called addition, it satisfies all of these conditions. Multiplication is only defined to be, required to be, associative, always the associativity. So this is sort of maximal structure for plus, minimal structure for multiplication in order to have a ring. And so this is required to be associative, and that's all. But there is one other condition. Since there are two operations, how do they interact with one another? And those are the distributive laws. There's the left distributive law. All of this says, by the way, that multiplication distributes over addition. So A times the quantity B plus C is A times B plus A times C. And that's the right distributive law. Since multiplication is not commutative, I can't just turn this around and say the left distributive law works too. Multiplication may or may not be commutative. It's not required to be. In which case, when I talk about the left distributive law, I also have to talk about the right distributive law. And this is A times C plus B times C. Examples of rings that we know. The reals. <clears throat> usual addition, usual multiplication form a ring. What else? Integers. The integers. Z under addition and multiplication form a ring. What else? Okay, good. <laughs> what did she say? She said complex numbers. This is addition of complex numbers and multiplication of complex numbers. I'll give you a little bit more about this example later. Okay. These are all three rings. And what I'd like to do is build this up to as close to a field as we can. And if I use R to stand for a ring under addition and multiplication, now, I want to go towards the field, which is our maximum structure for a set of two binary operations. R plus is an abelian group. Notice, zero in R can't have a multiplicative inverse. So, what I want to do is throw zero out of R. And consider, is it possible that R without zero forms also an abelian group? Are you always assuming that, that you're throwing zero out? Yes. Because zero times anything is zero. Right? And along with the distributive law, This is an important thing for you to know because I would be very surprised if in your version of the test that you take, you won't have a question about fields. What are fields? Fields are rings, i.e. sets with two binary operations, such that under addition, we form an abelian group. That's true for all rings. But under multiplication, except for zero, it also forms an abelian group. And the distributive law is whole, which again is true in any ring. So, when you go beyond just requiring multiplication to be associative, notice except for zero, we're, we're requiring the existence of an, a multiplicative identity, that there exists an inverse for every, under multiplication for every element, and that multiplication commutes. All of these things must be true in order for this to be an abelian group. So, that means we're looking at everything with zero here and asking, um, and asking whether or not this is true. And the answer is no. There's a 
matter of fact, if you really looked at those sets of rows over there to see that one doesn't appear there on the second row, but, but um, this set is not even closed. This set is not closed because if you're looking at multiplying 1, 2, 3 by itself and looking at all choices, 1, 2, 3 times 1, 2, 3 is this little 3 by 3 sub chart, right? Mm -hmm. And if it's closed, the only entries um, I can fill in here are 1, 2, 3. Mm -hmm. Here's my right? And notice that's what happens here. When I throw out 0, then I have to make sure that the operation when 0 is slowed out, the multiplication is still closed. Not true in this example. 